I am Hasna Maharof. I'm one of the directors at Footsteps Preschool. I'm specialized in teaching students with learning difficulties and mild disabilities. Our aim here at Footsteps Preschool is to make education inclusive to all. I'm a trained Montessori adult. I have run my own Montessori for the past 12 years. And now I'm a management partner at the Joyce Gunasekara Montessori House of Children, the pioneer uh, Montessori for Montessori education in Sri Lanka. What inspired you to get into early childhood education industry? Love for children. I naturally have an affinity towards children, which makes me love uh, spending a lot of time with them. I truly find it rewarding to be a part of their uh, growth. And also, my sister and my brother-in-law are my main two personalities in my life. Uh, who pushed me to where I am today. I always knew I wanted to work with children. I initially thought it would only be on the child psychology side of it. But when I started training and learning it, I realized I had a knack for teaching. And so I got into it. I started working at a, at a Montessori. And uh, as years went on, I realized um, I enjoyed it so much um, that I didn't want to give it up. And so when the time came to move on, I opened up my own place and have never looked back since. I enjoy the time I spend with children and I actually feel valued when I work with them. Do you focus more on academics or social growth? I would say social growth. Social growth plays an important role, rather a crucial role in a child's overall development which they will carry throughout their uh, life. And once social growth is mastered and when it's intact, automatically uh, education, academics will fall in place. Social growth, uh, like Hasna said, there is, uh, once you take care of what they need to uh, need, give them the right tools for their development, automatically academics will follow suit. Uh, what we need to focus, because we love, work with a very young age group, uh, our main, we are we are the main we are the first source of uh, information for them mostly, and uh, we have a great role to play. So if we focus on their social growth and making them confident beings and take care of that aspect, everything else will follow suit automatically. How do you stay updated and relevant? Read, follow social media content and gather information from the industry's best personalities where we are able to learn new techniques and uh, be and new learn new trends in the in our line of work and as a personal strategy i review i go through all latest techniques and i share it with my colleagues Furthermore, I also, I'm also very keen in pursuing uh, academic qualifications and professional development to grow and be relevant in the industry. Um, keeping, keeping updated on, on, on new techniques. I work in Montessori predominantly. Uh, we go back to the training center for exams and things like that. So we are kept updated in, on the new methods of uh, working with the children. In addition to that, when we're working with other adults as also, each one has a different approach with the children. It's learning from them, constantly being updated, making sure they are updated as well, learning from them, watching them work with children, uh, following people in the industry, sharing our thoughts, sharing our experiences and learning. We are part of a lot of teacher uh, support groups in terms of uh, uh, resources, uh, not only in Sri Lanka but also internationally. So then we, I'm kept updated on uh, the changes that are made and the new new methods that are coming into the classroom and uh, that's how we've progressed. What do you believe is the role of technology in the classroom? 
uh, technology can be used in numerous ways to create an enriched learning environment. Uh, children are able to focus more and uh, stay engaged when it comes to providing them with, uh, with animated presentations or games, rather even giving them devices such as the keyboard and the iPads and uh, stuff like that. So at Footsteps we use blended methodologies where we give the children a balance of both. I believe many parents nowadays believe that technology is very harmful to their children. It is when it's given for wrong reasons and for long durations. So it's all about how you balance it and it's all about uh, preparing the children because as we all know we are moving into a very digitalized era so it's better to prepare children now than later it is our future uh, they are a lot more savvy with it than we were at their age so we have to introduce it uh, because i work in montessori though we don't take away from they they've got a window from two and a half to five to develop their fine motor skills and without forgetting that helping them to develop that, giving them those skills, once that is formed, when we're introducing topics to them, um, using a bit of technology, using the, the computers for them to uh, view certain subjects, view certain topics, uh, is beneficial for the child. And also as a resource, uh, we have so many things at our fingertips. So uh, that is now something that we really do need to include in the classroom, but also limited making sure that what we give them when we give them how we give them is uh, uh, has a time limit on it what do you think is one of the greatest difficulties facing children today mm -hmm. I would say uh, problem solving skills and creativity children nowadays are spoon-fed rather given everything on a platter when children learn to problem solve and think independently they are able to face any challenges in a very proactive way. And once that is mastered, they automatically boost creativity, which will enhance uh, thinking outside of the box and innovation. Um, for our age group, I would say that yes, we are not giving them the right tools, we're not equipping them. I would also say sometimes a lack of parenting in right aspects. And as a result, children cannot think, they cannot make decisions for themselves. Uh, they rely on the adult suggesting and uh, giving it to them, doing things for them. And as a result, we now have to spend more time in developing those skills before actually introducing new topics to them because they can't. They can't make decisions. They, can't, they find it very, very tough in the classroom to actually uh, attend to things by themselves. They need that support. And uh, because we want to get, a, get, get along with our everyday life, everything is so fa fast-paced, it's easier for us to do it for the child, you know. And uh, But what we don't realize is that that we are we are stunting that that growth and so they're not learning to do things for themselves they're not being independent um, they are somehow sometimes I have three and four year olds who aren't able to do the basic things that a two year old should be doing and that's only because they've not been given the opportunity we don't give them enough opportunity for them to make these decisions for themselves, to do things, to fend for themselves, because children will automatically learn. It is a natural, natural instinct for them to learn. Um, but if we keep doing things for them and not giving them that opportunity to make mistakes, to fall down, by falling down, they know instinctively how to break that fall. If you don't let them fall, they will never know how to do it. And then their accidents are far worse. So we need to let them learn for themselves, feel, do it themselves, and learn how to, um, to deal with certain things in the classroom, outside the classroom, in, uh, in uh, social settings, uh, give, equipping them with the right tools to deal with those situations. How do you address negative feedback? With a growth mindset, feedback in particularly helps 
us uh, is a key driver of performance when it comes to leadership qualities. Uh, particularly negative feedback helps us to track performance and to be able to work as a team to uh, analyze ourselves as to where things have gone wrong and to develop as a team as a result in preventing any negative feedback and uh, watching out for positives all the time. Feedback, negative or positive, is a great opportunity to unlearn and relearn. Positively. Always listen to the feedback, go back to the drawing board, see how you could have done it differently. Um, listen, listen to what the complaint is or uh, what the problem is and see how you can change that uh, for future uh, f future uh, de dealings. Uh, also, whether positive or negative, feedback is always good when you're running your own business, when you're running uh, your own school, when you're dealing with children. Because however much you advertise, uh, however much you have um, promotional um, advertisements going out about your school, it is only a feedback that will bring in new clients. Uh, it is on uh, your uh, reputation that parents will send their children to you. So feedback for us is a very, very big part of our profession and we need it, positive or negative. We need it and we need to learn from it. How do you approach helping a reluctant learner achieve success in the classroom? I would say uh, finding out the root cause as to why the child is disengaging or showing unwillingness to learn. It could be reasons such as uh, disability, which is undiagnosed, or uh, struggling with content or not feeling very comfortable in the given environment. Once the cause is being observed, it's all about applying the right uh, teaching strategies and helping the child outgrow and develop as a person. Every child has his or her own strengths. So repetitive activities, uh, showing a lot of love, empathy will definitely help every child reach their growth. Finding out the likes of the child, reading the child, getting the child to decide what he wants to do in the classroom with a little nudge from yourself. If he doesn't like it, find out why he doesn't like it. Uh, the beauty of Montessori is that you work at each child's pace. Uh, you invite the child to take an activity, not tell him to take an activity. You give him the opportunity to choose the activity for himself. So he shows you through that, through his choice, what he likes to do. And then you work from there. If he's reluctant to do the writing, reluctant to sit uh, at an activity for more than 10 minutes, find out what he enjoys doing it and start from that end. Start and slowly lead him towards what you feel he needs to be doing. Uh, to get into regular school. There are activities that he will need to do, he will need to learn. Um, so do it. Find out what his like is and let him direct you to start teaching him the right way. How much flexibility do you have in determining how you perform your role? Uh, flexibility is a skill. It takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. Uh, as a personal strategy, I always organize myself and I always have uh, a <coughs> lot of things pre-planned so that any given situations I have a very positive mindset, a, a, a growth mindset to be able to face any a given or changing environment successfully. Flex part of working with children, uh, one of the priorities is being flexible. Uh, not every child learns the same way and not everything will go according to plan uh, for the day. So you need to be ready to deal with that. You need to be able to change your strategy when working with the child, when working with the adults in your classrooms. Uh, so that, that is a given. It's not an easy task. It's something that you need to teach yourself. You need a lot of uh, practice, a lot of patience, and to keep telling yourself um, it's okay, but Flexibility is a must if you're working with children because not every child works the same way. And so you need to uh, be flexible in terms of t changing your methods uh, to suit each child when working with them. How have you handled tough times during the pandemic and the current climate of the country? Uh, COVID-19 is one of our biggest success stories. 
we were able to face the pandemic very successfully thankfully uh, because of the two educators rather my partners that i work with my two partners carry uh, 18 years of experience uh, teaching and learning in the uae under the gem schools so they were very much tech savvy so transition was very easy uh, as a school we uh, conducted special programs to train our teachers to switch to virtual uh, teaching and we were also able to tailor make uh, resource packs and we delivered them home we had a very successful uh, virtual learning where we take great pride as a team we had so many children joining us globally uh, countries such as uh, japan india maldives doha dubai etc and the success story which began during covid has helped us lead to start a virtual school which we've uh, affiliated with a, a virtual school in the uk by the noem sofia so that is also currently a very successful uh, program that we run in school um we it was uh, being very honest it was tough at first but i'm also thankful for what i was able to learn in the process we had to educate ourselves on uh, using um technology to get through to children which is a tough task at that age to uh, to engage them but uh, it was kishani and i the, my partner who worked we taught ourselves we learned we used the resources available and there were plenty uh, we also came up with programs we uh, did the packs the study packs for the children we sent it home we worked every day with uh, the full classroom online uh, taking uh, segments for each of them uh it was uh it was challenging but also lots of fun we learned a lot we educated ourselves and that is the best thing that came out of it um we learned new methods in in reaching the child reaching out to the child which we can still put in practice now and having 70 children now at the Joyce Kinder Second Montessori is uh is uh, fabulous because now we can put into practice everything that we learned even during the covid du- during covid unfortunately uh we didn't have that physical engagement with them uh which is all the all part of the fun in working with children but uh the fact that we managed we educated ourselves we learned from the resources available and we upped our game we changed our game we we um m- made it to suit the times uh and in any other case uh, if not for covid we wouldn't have done that we wouldn't have been pushed out of our comfort zone to work we but we did we had to we knew that that was something that the children needed they they missed engaging with the teachers they missed engaging having that that opportunity to talk to their friends to their peers in schools and so we worked on that we found methods to reach out to them and uh, we did it successfully uh it was tough i will i i will admit that but uh, one thing i think our self growth during that period is is a positive that we can take from that if you had one piece of advice to someone just starting out what would it be be brutally honest because remember you're planting the first seed in a child's early years which they will carry with them throughout their lives don't think of the numbers think of the quality consistency and remember teaching is not just a business it's a service absolutely you are the first big influence in that child's life what you teach them now or what you impart to them now they will take with them remember you are a you are a role model you deal with them the correct way they will always love they will they will love going to school they will love interacting with adults in the classroom they will enjoy working and so how you impart that knowledge to them is very very important you have a big role it is a it is a calling it is a service uh yes business is involved yes you need to promote your business yes you need to earn money but ultimately it's a vocation remember you have a huge responsibility uh these children are relying on you to give them the correct information to give them the correct tools to work with to thereafter go into society and be responsible adults so if you are responsible with the job you have been given they will be responsible you will you will create responsible adults thereafter
what differences do you see in each other as business personalities? Um, I am a goal-driven person and I work with a dynamic team uh, with six partners uh, and I find it very easy and very supportive to reach our end goal. Hasna is very savvy with making contact, using those contacts to develop the school uh, for the right purposes and uh, that is something that I can learn from them. I'm a little shy, uh, shy of doing that so I don't. I uh, compare, uh, comparatively am a very um, hands-on person. I like, I'm very passionate about my subject. I need to talk about it. I need to uh, transmit what I'm thinking to the people involved and that's how that's how I have built my business by forming a relationship with people who do come uh, to the school and that's how I work. What advice would you give each other? I've been known Sanjana ever since I was schooling. Um, she is one of my sister's best friends and you all uh, work together right? She, my, right. Yeah, yeah so my right. sister has learned a lot from Sanjana as colleagues and uh, Always be the genuine, hard-working, compassionate person you are. <laughs> uh, I think you all have got uh, a really good thing going with the school. You all are working very well as a team. Uh, I'm glad to have worked with uh, Fazra at one point and I'm glad to have imparted some sort of knowledge to her and, that, and to see her going out and doing what she's doing now uh, makes me so proud and it's amazing the job you all are doing and I have also learnt a lot from you guys and uh, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> what has been the most important part of your journey so far? Having my own venture and uh, seeing the growth and the development that we've made as a team uh, and that I've made as an individual I take immense pride and I'm truly humbled to be able to be a part of a child's life which I know will impact them throughout their life. Every child I've come into contact with through my journey as a teacher, every child that I have managed to impart some sort of knowledge, some sort of advice, uh, they are the most, the, the biggest thing I value in, in this line of work and the fact that I own my own business and I've been in the industry for 20 years, I've had 20 years experience and I have loved every minute of And it's very day. rewarding, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. It's a blessing. It is. Yeah. Your personality plays a major role in success, true or false? Very true. It's all about you being a team player, it's all about you giving respect, gaining respect and uh, having great leadership skills and uh, being able to uh, be good with your teachers, your parents and everyone that surrounds you. True. I, um, like we mentioned before, flexibility is very important. It's a very good trait to have. Um, I am very passionate about my work and what I do and if I commit, I commit 100% and uh, that is part of why I am a successful teacher. I go down, children need you to be dynamic, they need you to be creative and two of my passions are drama, uh, theatre and singing and that has helped me work with children because I can break into song whenever I feel they need that sort of uh, ex exposure. I can uh, write my own scripts for them whenever I need, I can work craft with them at any given opportunity and uh, those are things that have uh, really really helped me engage with children and and in turn I find them uh, enjoying my company and loving being with me so that helps me uh, be a successful teacher in the classroom. What do you think about this program? Firstly uh, Danu thank you very much uh, for reaching out to us we are two passionate educators for giving us this platform to talk about what we love, what we do with all our heart. Um, we follow this program and I've come across many great Sri Lankan personalities in diverse fields where I've learned a lot and uh, I've taken many positives from them. So it's a great show. Keep going. 
It's a great opportunity to be given to come on to the show. Thank you guys for inviting us. And like Hasna says, we are passionate educators. We love a platform to talk about what we do. And if in some way we can impart our knowledge to others, it is fantastic. And we have learned, we've watched other personalities come on here. We've learned so much from them. And if we can give this to people who are looking for that sort of um, yes. influence, that sort of uh, advice from people like us in the industry, that is a great opportunity. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.